Welcome to the man cave, slightly delayed due to corona lockdown and work pressures. But this is the long awaited video on the chameleon and chameleon tiny. And no, this video isn't brought to you by Rage Shadow Saga or whatever it's called. Yep, you stumbled onto the one YouTube channel that apparently they aren't sponsoring. It's been a long time in coming and what with how busy work is at the moment, I had to deprioritize this video. But here it is. Today, we'll be looking at the chameleon family, which whilst not as versatile as the Proxmark from other videos, they're useful tools. And in some situations, it's better than a Proxmark and is simpler to use. Now I'm presuming if you're watching this, you've already watched the other videos on radio frequency ID. So I'm going to assume you've got a basic knowledge of RFID and, and what you can do with it. So what can you do with a chameleon? Well, the answer is lots. And in this video, I'm going to focus on the Revision G version of the chameleon, which has some extra features than the previous, but overall, most of the attacks are going to be just the same. Today, we will focus on the differences between the chameleon tiny, and the Chameleon Mini. Connecting to the app, reading a card, emulating a card, and finally, how to use the Chameleon to extract keys from a reader and execute a further attack. This is really only scratching the surface, and as time goes on, I may do more videos on further use depending on what you want. Let me know in the comments below and I'll try and make it happen. So in the latest revision, there are two broad kinds of chameleon, not to be confused with the Proxmark V4, and I think I've got a V3 somewhere around here, and it's got a blue sharp module in it, but let's put that away. They look very, very, very similar, but they're different. So this is the um, um, Chameleon Tiny, and this is the Chameleon Mini. So the Chameleon Mini just looks a little bit like this. So it has an antenna on it, very, very similar to the Proxmark, and it has a few different memory banks. The Chameleon Tiny is exactly the same as this. It has a few memory banks on the back, and it has its A and its B buttons just here. And of course, it has your USB charging port, and this has its USB charging port, and there's an internal battery. So what's the main difference between these two? Well, I think the battery is slightly bigger on, on this one, which is the, uh, um, which is the mini. Um, and also more importantly, this has got Bluetooth low energy and that's gonna become quite important in a minute because it means we don't need to use the USB port on the side for anything other than charging. And with Bluetooth low energy, it means you can wander off, you can then log on to things, you can do things with it and then come back to your tablet and then reconnect your tablet. Now, there is a rumor around circulating around that the Chameleon Tiny is going to get a Bluetooth low energy um, upgrade. Uh, watch this space. As soon as I uh, manage to, uh, to get my hands on one, I will show it here. I suspect it can be exactly the same as these ones, um, but just with Bluetooth low energy. Hopefully though, I hope I can get a red and a gold one. I always wanted an Iron Man themed one. So if you've got a red and a gold one, I would swap your black one for that. Anyway, right, let's move on. So for the rest of this, I am going to swap over and be using my tablet, and I'm actually going to use um, uh, the Tiny, not the uh, not the Mini, because this doesn't have Bluetooth low energy. Now I could just plug this in on a um, on a um, USB C to USB C and plug it into the bottom, and it would work exactly the same, just like I could plug this one straight into the bottom. But you know, I'm not going to do that because I want to show you how you do the Bluetooth low energy. But all the rest of it's exactly the same. So the way to connect this to the app is very, very simple. You simply turn on the device till that starts to flash. Go in to your app uh, and then uh, just click connect. Just go, so you'll get into this screen. If you've never connected before, you'll get to this screen. It'll tell you it can see one over there and then just click connect and that should connect. If my thing was turned on. Oop. There we are, there we are, all connected. So it really is that simple. Turn it on when you're in the when you're in the uh, Chameleon software, and I'll leave the links to everything in the description below. Just press the connect button. The Bluetooth thing will appear in there, and now suddenly you're actually in. You're now on your thing. So, what can we do here? Well, we've got all of our slots listed. Our slots one to eight. Try not to drag and stop, otherwise it'll then reload all of the data from all of the individual slots. And you can see the lights are slowly going across as it slowly does it. 
and there we are, it's now finished. Now what you can do is you can turn on and off slots if you needed to, so you don't have to cycle all the way through. Imagine if you've got only two cards you want to show or two cards you want to do something with, you may actually only want to have two slots enabled. You can then jump straight in and you can jump into an individual slot. So to return back, you'd press slot overview, that would take you back to return in. So slot one, you can see here, what have I got this turned into? So right up here, you've got, what do I want this to be? And I've got all kinds of cards in here from ultralights to uh, minis, to my fair classics, to uh, sorry, my classic minis, to 4Ks and 1Ks. And I've also got um, my fair classic to take 4K and my fair classic to take 1K. So what this allows me to do is to take the card, once I've set it, set slot number one, which is slot number one, which is active here, into my fair detect mode and it allow me to go to an RFID reader and emulate the user ID of the card that's shown there, the serial number, sorry, of the card that's shown there, present it to the reader. Now, for the reader to be able to read the, uh, the RFID card, imagine it's going to read one of these RFID cards, it would have to send um, the encryption key to be able to decrypt one or more of the blocks. Um, and in sending that decryption key, what would actually happen is this card would just read the decryption key and just store it. Now, what does that allow you to do? Well, it allows you to extract at least one key. It will allow you to get at least one key from that particular card. So I know a lot of the software is improved and you can do the, uh, with the Proxmark, you've got um, in the Iceman build, you've got the auto pawn, which like kind of rolls in the hard nested, the checking keys and the whole enchilada and pretty much will crack any card. Well, imagine none of that works and you need one card, one key to get into that card. Well, this will allow you to get that one key because by definition, when that card goes near the reader, the reader has to at least try and unlock at least one block on the card, which means you can do that and extract a key. So imagine I had this card here and I, I didn't have, I couldn't get any of the keys for this particular card, but I did have a valid reader that would read this particular card. Well, what I could do is I could emulate the UID of the card, as I said earlier on. And what I'm now gonna do is I would now approach the um, door reader using my chameleon. And I could set the UID to be a valid user ID. If I knew a valid card ID, I could set the, uh, the UID of the card to be that valid card ID. In many cases, it doesn't really matter, but imagine they have got it set to only react to certain card IDs. Um, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna emulate a door reader using my, um, using my chameleon. So, so using my Proxmark. So imagine if I were to put this key, this, uh, key or this, uh, this car, uh, key card down and I to try and read one of the blocks, you can see that is actually a valid block. And so that's what really would happen. Imagine if I were to rerun that again and I were to run the exact same command, I get an auth error because of course, there's no actual card emulated on there. We'll come to how you do that later on. Now I've now, so all I've had to do is walk up to the reader and just stick my uh, chameleon near the reader and wait for it to the red light to come on or just to buzz and say, sorry. But now if I go back into my, uh, back into my software and I look down here to the MF key 32 function and I press the crack button, boom, there we are. That key that I put in ending in 61 is the top key that's now listed there. Now the reason why it's showing two is because I was playing around with this earlier on and actually that's an, also a valid key for that particular card. But it just demonstrates to you how you could wander around using this to extract keys from readers even if you don't actually have a valid card. And that would then allow you to take that key there and would then allow you to supply that key into hard nested or into any of the other attacks and actually then use that to extract the whole contents of the card. Well, I hope you now understand that whilst not as powerful as the Proxmark, the Chameleon really is a useful tool. Whether you use it to emulate many cards in one or conduct further research, it's very versatile and has a place in your toolbox. Can it replace your Proxmark? Well, no, it can't. But where I may not always carry my Proxmark, I will always have a tablet and phone and my chameleon. So that's it for this video. Please like and subscribe and tell your friends. Let me know what you want to see and I'll try and get it made. Now, many thanks to Iceman for his continued support, both in developing the Iceman fork to the Proxmark, as well as creating the best Windows interface 
for the chameleon. Please support him on Patreon. The link to his Patreon page is in the description below. Have fun and never stop learning.